Well, hello everybody and a warm welcome to Hochanda. I know that we've got a lot of new viewers joining at this hour because we are going to be featuring a supremely talented artist. Uh, really proud to say that Ada Banjay uh, is going to be joining us. Uh, he's an exceptional artist and he really does bring all his passion into his work and his sketching. I'll tell you what we got. I think we have got him on Skype. So uh, allow me to introduce you to the man himself. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, how you um, doing, buddy? Oh, I'm just going to go into the screen a bit. Okay. Uh, yeah. We're all, uh, Adabanje, we're all getting used to the world that currently, the new normal where we're, we're communicating by Skype. So trust me, you're not the only one and other uh, video networks and platforms are available. So look, uh, okay. I know you're brand new to our audience. So welcome to the Hochanda yeah. family. I know we're going to be featuring yeah. your fantastic sketchbook. But before we do that, tell us a little bit about yourself. So... Basically, I am one person who just loves sketching. Um, everything about sketching uh, is, is, is in my DNA. Yeah. I'm addicted to sketching. Um, I'm the vice president of the Royal Institute of um, oil, um, oil Painters. I also present um, documentaries, art-related documentaries yeah. on The One Show. Oh. And the one thing that stands out for me, I yeah. would say, is that I just love drawing. And I believe sketching and drawing is the basis of every bit of art. I've had the privilege of uh, reading your book. And I have to say, all that passion really does come through. Uh, you're exceptionally talented, but what I get a sense of is you're equally passionate about sharing your techniques, getting other people sketching. And you, this book will appeal to all levels of artist yes me, um, you do need a bit of um, drawing skills I would say okay but what it does do it gives anyone who is wanting to be passionate about re reigniting or just getting a bit of what they love yeah. maybe when they were in school or so just something to passion nice. this is the book because there's so many ideas on where to sketch and techniques on how to sketch and that's the thing look indoors outdoors techniques 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 and also building off of artistic principles and foundations as well now uh, you dropped you dropped some big names so I know that you are working at the moment am I right in saying you're resident artist of a, a prominent show you just mentioned so you're, you're yeah, their the actual one, resident the artist show. Yeah, yeah the beat the beat like last night um, if anyone watched the one show last yeah. night, they would have seen me presenting something on um, the cathedral in Coventry and how it was Amazing. affected in the World War. Wow. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I love a bit of art and presenting oh. art, art oh. history and stuff like that. Yeah. How did that tell me? How did that all come about? How did you go from artist then finding yourself working on TV? Um, working on well i won a competition in london a few um a, a, a few years ago okay it was in 2013 i won a competition called pinta rapido right. and it was all about um painting a picture quickly in one day and then it would be judged by a, a prominent artist the next day so i won the competition the first one um, and ken howard gave me the first prize it was a thousand pounds that's amazing and so 2015 um, the, the, the organizers wanted me to to go on the one show to talk about what my experience of it was uh, my experience of winning it was like and that's how they fell in love with me when I did that little talk and that was it um, I started getting offers <laughs> Wow and look you're, you're such a talented guy you deserve uh, to have a high profile look we're just gonna very quickly we'll be flicking through uh, the books so we're gonna come back to you in a moment before we leave you what what are you gonna be yeah. sharing with us uh, this hour what can our viewers look forward to so today I am going to be doing uh, a sketch of a very famous artist called Picasso. Oh. Now everyone, every household name should know Picasso. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm going to sketch him using some of the techniques, especially one of them, which is angles, to plot this in a freehand sketch. Uh -huh. And I hope people will enjoy it. That 
I can't. I absolutely cannot wait. Adabanji, thank you so much. Uh, so we're going to get back to you in just a moment. Do stay on the line. We're just going to uh, have a look and introduce your book and a few other things. And I promise we're going to get to your demonstration. But thank you so much for chatting to us. It's good. I'm really looking forward to that. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. OK, we're going to look at the book. For 11 I think this is an absolute steal. Actually, for 14 99 the amount of knowledge in here. So look, what I would say to you at uh, Hochanda, if you are a regular to Hochanda, odds are you're passionate about your crafting. Imagine being able to inject some of your own hand sketched art onto a project. You can still use obviously your stamps, your stencils, all the other mediums. We're not stopping you doing that. But what you're able to do is embellish, add further detail as well. Uh, I know that Adabanje is passionate about that ability, called it the sketching, that instant sketch, the ability to come up with something very quickly uh, and incisively. Just going to go through the actual book. And as we progress through, I mean, for 11 99 if you do know somebody who loves, to, who loves art, who really wants to develop uh, their skills in sketching, this is actually something that I used to love uh, when I was doing GCSE, so it was a long time ago, but I'd like to uh, restart my passion there, and I, obviously I need to refresh a lot of uh, my techniques. So there he is. Uh, there's Adabanji. Uh, nice that you got, uh, obviously, an introduction to, to him there. And then we start exploring. So getting a sense of work, principles, motivations, inspirations in the mix, what you need, which is obviously important. So he really does cover all angles. Then, as you see, great pictures coming through. Step-by-step -step instructions with all his techniques as you go, uh, as you progress in. Structure, which is important. These are artistic principles that you need, your organic lines. So again, this is stuff that we could all use. That the knowledge in here you will be using across all disciplines of your craft. So being able to appreciate perspective, shadow, it's something that we hear a lot. Do you know what? This could be, say, you could be watching right now, purchase this book, and in a few years' time, we could be seeing your own hand sketches as a stamp on Hochanda. Now, uh, I've got to tell you something else. The first 50 that purchase this book will receive a signed copy. So that not only is a fantastic book, but it's going to be an absolute investment. You've just heard uh, Adabanje uh, discussing. He's highly sought after. He's on primetime TV, uh, well-known show on the BBC. 10% of the stock's already gone. So if you want to get this as a gift, my advice, if you know you're going to go for it, I'd want the signed copy, me personally. So uh, if you do want to get a hold of this, now's the time to pop it into your basket. Make sure that if you're part of the first 50 to order, and they are very busy now, the book is becoming very busy. If you're the first 50 to order, you will, look at this, receive that signed copy. But being able to do something like that, and what I would say to you with regard to sketching, yes, it is, it is a discipline. There is a uh, learning curve, but what, Adabanje does is he pours all his knowledge, all his experience uh, as an artist into the book and gives you the tools to be able to do this, those quick sketches. So if you wanted to add this to a journal, scrapbook, travel journal, memory book, look at this on Busker. So you could be out and about for the day, obviously when restrictions are lifted, uh, see something that catches your eye uh, and you can just sketch it. You could come to Hochanda, Maybe if you're a dream day viewer, uh, win a dream day and do a little sketch. Markets, places, I know he's passionate about showing you different techniques both inside and out. It is a fantastic book. It's a book that you will take your leisure with, enjoy it and let it pour in and you will reread for 11 99 And if you know somebody who loves to sketch, wants to uh, increase their skill, this is the book for you. Uh, the best way to appreciate how good this book is and how good Adabanje is, is to see him in action. So we're going to go to Adabanje now. Uh, he's going to be showing us his work. Love this. We're going to be looking at Adabanje sketching Picasso. Enjoy. Okay, Adabanje, everyone. Um, I hope you can all see me clearly. Um, mainly, I don't want to be um, mainly in the camera, um, I'll show my face a bit, um, but I'm going to be a little bit out of the camera so you can see what I'm doing. And even if you can only see my sketching hand, 
that will be fine. The first thing I want you to do um, to understand is I love anyone or anyone out there to have the ability to look at something and sketch it um, with a bit of ease because sketching is such is such a dynamic thing and I think we can all do it. We have the ability. We've got the right brain and we can handle it. And I'm here to encourage anyone. So today we're going to be doing Picasso. I'm pointing to him, very well-known person in the art world. And I'm going to be sketching him using colored pencils. Um, the colored pencils I'm using are called Lyra Color Giants colored pencils. They are basically um, very... Um, thick colored pencils, but any colored pencil would do. I just like the Lyra Color Giants one, and I'm going to be using maybe like three colors at least, like a black, a brown, and uh, a light brown, okay? I might, if time permits me, to add some sepia dust and some sanguine dust, and these ones are from Creta Color. Um, they produce this lovely dust it's, it, it helps in um, adding tones to a, a portrait. And apart from that, I'll have my handy knife to sharpen the pencil. I'll have a bit of tissue to rub in the dust if time permits. But the main thing I'm going to be needing today is my eyes and a knowledge of how to go about this. So without wasting time, I think the time now is 1411. Let's see how we can quickly capture Picasso. In the book, one of the techniques I share is called angles. And by angles, I mean the tilts. Like you might have a tilt there, a tilt here, a tilt going down, a tilt like that. And I follow that to be able to capture um, whatever I'm drawing. So if I'm going to draw someone's head, like say the woman in front of this book, the first angle I'm looking at is her forehead. That is almost a straight angle. Then it goes in, which um, goes in a, li a little bit, and then it comes out again, and I'm checking that angle, and then it might go in again, and it might come out and in and out. You can see me only following the angles, so most of how I'm going to, and that was, that's just a profile. And that's kind of like what I'll be working on. The word, the paper I'm using is, it's, I'm going to just put it in front of the camera. It's a very thick paper. It's about, uh, I would say, um, let's see. Oh, 300 pounds, I would say. 300 pounds, sounders, water fill, water fod, um, watercolor paper, but I've also sanded it. I've used a little bit of sandpaper to sand the surface so that it can absorb the pencil and the dust. So let's go. The first thing I'm going to think about when trying to capture Picasso is I'm going to try and look at the overall shape of his head. And that is like a brief contour. So when I look at his head, I'm just going to be rolling my pencil trying to capture the overall shape overall shape and you and you can keep doing this um i'm going to use the lighter pencil to start off i started using black just the way it moves like the overall shape that's so important um you remember this is freehand so being freehand there is no reason why i need to be worried um about um the accuracy, remember it's a sketch and I tell people don't get bogged down because at the end of the day, it's a sketch. I, I use this kind of funny thing in the book. I said, sometimes I used to sketch at the very beginning and people would look at it and say, that don't look like what you're sketching. And I'll tell them it's only a sketch and that's all that matters. So um, one of the things, it sketching takes the pressure off you. So here we go. So I'm just kind of like getting the overall shape of Picasso's Head. Just the overall shape. So important to get that overall shape. Now, once I've got the overall shape, I'm going to be, and this I use, these are like organic contours. Just get that. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I need to be able to see his head in structure. And just like if we had a box, 
the box would look something like this. If, if we looked at it in perspective, this area is dark and this area will be light. And that's exactly what's happening to Picasso's face. This is dark and the light is coming this way. And so I'm gonna do the same thing on Picasso's face. I'm gonna mark where the structure actually comes in, which is the, the plane of his face. And that would be around here. So, and that just helps me to map out the side of his face, just the side. And I'm just gonna briefly shade that, just with hatching, just brief hatching. Just, just shade that in briefly with hatching. So you can see all of a sudden, I have this light side and this dark side, and that helps me to kind of really understand how his head is without even going into any kind of detail. Now I'm gonna get a little bit serious, and I'm gonna look for shapes inside his head, shapes. The first one I can see is like an egg shape. You can see me rolling the egg, just my, my my um just i'm rolling my uh pencil it's like an oval thing in there and i'm going to put that just oval shape going to roll it right in here the next kind of shape i see is like almost like a square shape and i'm going to put that in somewhere here just like a square shape it's like a a square just a little bit of his hair that shows and then it comes down, I know you can't see this that much, but I'm kind of like using my colored pencil. I know his hair, it, the, the line of it comes down somewhere there. So this marks this side and his hair is actually invisible because there's a lot of dark, but I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna put some sort of air in there just to fill in that place. And that area is the air. So, so far, we first of all did this shape we made sure that we understood the shadow effect of it, because I'm just gonna show you that in the shadow, and we've able to plot the air in. Now I'm gonna go for the first angle, which is after the air, which is something right there. It's just the line of his shoulder because he's kind of like hedged down. I hope this is all clear and it's all making um, sense as everyone can see. Now I'm gonna plot the four, this whole area here, which is like um, uh, a forehead, it's like, to me, it's like a circle, an imaginary circle. And I'm gonna put that imaginary circle just inside here. Just keep rolling it, rolling it. As far as I can see that circle, I'm gonna put it right inside here. And that kind of gives me a very good feeling of it, right? Now, the next thing is for me to plot where the features are going to go. I need to be able to plot the axis in between the head and then also the, the levels of the eye, the levels of the nose and the levels of the mouth, all like that. Just but first of all, I need to be able to put that circle and I put that in there. So I'm gonna go with some really kind of straight lines and get the level of his eyes. Remember, everything is done freehand, so let's go. That's one, and I'm gonna approximate, um, just put an approximate, um, I think that they, they, just all that for the eyes, just all that for the eyes, and then, um let's see just make sure that i get this right just keep on always trying to get the circle okay so i'm happy with that being the eyes again i'm being very careful here because i noticed that my ear is somewhere here so the eye level is quite low so the eyes start off around here so this is the eye level the next thing will be the nose and that comes further down. So I'm gonna put that further down, somewhere around here will be the level for his nose. And then you can see all of a sudden, I know where the eyes might end up being. I know where his nose might end up being. Now his mouth, all these are just approximate proportions. Don't get bogged down. Just always look for simple distances and then put that. So I'm gonna put the mouth level somewhere here. And now I'm gonna carefully try my best to go with angles. I mentioned this in the book 
and I'm going to plot it right through. But let me continue with the hedge, first of all. So there's a shape here, and then there's an angle here, and then it goes down. That's another angle. And then it curves, and then it goes straight in, and that gives me the top of his face. And now there's this line that goes straight down. Notice I'm using the side of my pencil. It's a broad stroke, so I use the side of the colored pencil. It helps. I talk about that in the book too. Okay, so now I've got that to a certain level. So I'm going to go over those lines again, backwards, here, around, his hair that shows, and then a little bit of the air, which will be around here, and then we have just that bit of the hench over there. And when I draw a straight line across, not a straight line, but a curve to connect to the other shoulder, I see something dropping like that. It actually drops at an angle. And I know that maybe around here will be where his other shoulder starts coming in. So if you notice, I'm able suddenly to plot the top of his head and I'm now going to start dealing with his features. The first feature I'm going to deal with is the, this eye. And I'm just going to block in a whole shade, just a whole shade of that eye. Just block it in like a whole shade because it's like a socket. I'm not even looking too deeply into it. And then the next eye, I'm gonna block in. Just block it in. Don't even think about the eye. Remember, this is a sketch. I'm probably doing this so fast, but if I was on the tube, but I'm really slowing down so you can all see and um, grasp this. Okay, I'm gonna go back now to the top of his head so I can make sure everything is in proportion. And I also am gonna tone some of the dark areas. So all this, I'm gonna tone it, just darken it. And I'm using the broad stroke technique here, just broad stroke. All I'm doing here is the broad stroke, just putting broad strokes in, just all the area where it's dark. And I'm leading that dark, all this dark area, I'm just going slowly, steadily. I move, actually move into the um, his top of his head, and I look at a little highlight in there. We're going to leave a circle for that, and just keep going with the top of my pencil, like that, like that, just around, just over, just to create the forehead. And now I'm going to make sure I get the right level of forehead right in there. So. It's so important that because this is where the structure of his face actually changes. Everything in here feels like um, a forehead. So I'm going to put the, the furrows and everything and just run across it easily till I get to the top. So that's kind of like his forehead, um, just already kind of positioned for, for action. And now I'm going to put... You know that I, I said the eyes are just gonna have these dark things. I'm not gonna make the eyes prominent yet. And now I'm gonna try and get the nose. So without putting much emphasis on the eye at the moment, I'm gonna try and get the nose. So I'm gonna see a line that comes like this and then it bulges out like that. It goes across like that sort of a, um, a way, and it kind of has a little kind of dark thing at the bottom here. One thing I forgot was the axis that goes through, so I'm just going to put that through, just the axis, and that is, it divides the head into two, so I've just knocked that in very quickly because I forgot about that. Once I've got the egg and I've got the structure, it's nice to have a nice axis that goes through. Okay, let's get the other side of the nose now, which is, um, if I say the eyes began here, now this side, I can see a straight line and another little bit of a straight line, and then you can lovely, you can see how his nose just comes in. It's, he has a quite a large nose, <laughs> and um, I'm just going to put that right in there. Hope everyone can can see this, um, you know, because um, everything's going to take shape uh, all of a sudden. So now we've got the nose in. We can get um, the level of his mouth. So we can note we notice that there's a space between the nose and the top lip. 
I can say that's there. And then the top lip kind of like flips just on, a, on an area just around here, okay? And then the bottom lip is around here and his chin around there. I, I noticed that the tilt of his mouth just tilts slightly. It just tilts slightly in there and a little bit comes out just around there. And under his lip, there's a nice shade, a nice shade, very nice shade. Now I'm going to go into the eyes now just to make things, so I know where things are. So very quickly, I'm going to get the shape. So from the forehead, he has this kind of Mr. Spock eye thing, like I'm an old school Star Trek fan. And I know that there's this kind of like, his eyes have this really intense feel. So I've, that's the shape I'm bringing in there. And then I'm going to pick the eye area where the eye socket and pupil just come in strong. Let's just put that right in there. And underneath the eye, let's just keep that around like that. So that kind of helps us see that side of his eye. And now we want to go into this side of his eye, which is um, the one on my left. Uh, Adabanje. Advantage? Yes. Hey, sorry, buddy. Could would you mind if we just pause there for a moment? We will continue. I'm just going to need to give a few updates on uh, the book. Would that be okay? Yes. Yeah, brilliant. So just pause there. Don't do any more work uh, to it. We'll be back to you in one moment. But I have to say, it is amazing, and the whole team we've been enthralled with your demonstration. Just watching how quickly you've brought that to life. So thank you so much. We'll be back to Adabanje in just a moment. I've got to tell you, seeing it. And it really is a compliment to the book. Uh, and Ada Benje is a talented artist. All the team, we were all saying we need this book. Uh, and you can see it now. Now, 30% of the book, actually we're approaching 30% of the book has already gone. We're only 26 minutes into the show. What I would say, and it's so nice to see the demonstration because Ada Benje described the principles and this is what you're gonna get in the book. So you notice the first thing that Ada Benje did uh, was the structure. Sorry, no, he didn't. He did the angles. So he just created the egg with the face. He put in the axis so you had an idea of uh, roughly proportions. So that was the first bit, all about the angles, just getting the angles right, working off of that. Uh, and then he started to add the shapes. So he was looking for shapes within the face. So he was just picking out small little details and shapes coming through. And then it was the structure as well. So just building up, building up, building up. Uh, and able to, what I would say in watching, now obviously Adabanje is extremely talented, but in time, and it's not something you're gonna get straight away, but you're learning that muscle memory, you're learning uh, perspective and so many principles. If we go through, I did have uh, the angle, there we go. So this is all about angles. Now that's important. So learning the perspective, whether it's profile, uh, angles, obviously absolutely uh, vital when you're building up your composition going through. So he discusses the angles, then structure. That was another big uh, aspect of the demonstration you just saw. Now these are all principles explained in the book, but these are artistic merits that you're gonna carry through in, in all aspects of your crafting. So then organic lines, obviously very, very important, but you see how clear all the information is. You get the pictures. Now I love this because you've also got uh, matching subject to technique, which is really important. So it's learning the right technique for your subject. This book is an absolute treasure trove. What it is, is a masterclass in a book. Composition is a massive thing. Now, learning composition, you're going to use that in all aspects of your crafting. So you will never regret learning about composition. Uh, you've also uh, got your more composition in there, lighting, values. Oh, that's a good one. So values. Got to tell you, within here, now values also uh, important with regard to tones. Do you know there are 400 color illustrations with that is a very sweet picture really nice sketch coming through so imagine sketching your family your friends or if you're going on a trip we can obviously take pictures but imagine having a little artist sketch sketchbook or journal and being able to do a little sketch this is what you will achieve you've got pub scenes in here as well so adabanje effectively is taking you through every step of the way He's there, he's holding your hand, he's giving you uh, techniques that are gonna stand the test of time. We are extremely busy for this book. Just a reminder, the first 50 uh, will receive a, a signed signature. 
and we are very close to uh, have sold our first 50. There is still time, so if you do make a purchase right now, odds are you will still be in the first 50 to uh, get that signature. After that, you're still getting the book, you just won't receive the signature going through. You've got uh, places outdoors, and this is an another thing the book really focuses on, both inside and outside. So when you do, oh, that must be Bath. Is that Bath? Isn't that stunning? Got that fi it's got that filter. Yeah, yeah, I think he's uh, Adabanje's nodding. Yeah. London going through. Oh, look at this. I mean, you can see uh, Adabanje, um, you, you've traveled some beautiful places, but you've brought them to life with your sketches. You've kept those memories alive. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of knowing to sketch. So you're not only taking pictures, you're also, you can also go with your sketchbook and enjoy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Adabanja, we'll continue <laughs> with the demonstration. Thank you so much. Just a reminder, we are very, very busy for your book, so don't miss out. Eleven ninety nine, your price. Four uh, three four one three five, your item number. If you have just tuned in, watch the demonstration because we have absolutely loved it. So uh, over to you, Adabanja. Okay. So now I'm going for um, the, my left. The left eye now um, was my left hand, and I'm just making sure that I get the the dark area in between here, because he's got this really dark area here, which comes in, and that creates the eye socket. So I always look at it as a shape. So going in there, it's almost like a fish shape, almost like a fish shape. I'm just going through like a fish shape, and then you've got this ball, strong ball, because Picasso's eyes are really deep, like really bulgy eyes he's got. So I'm just gonna darken somewhere inside of this, let it feel dark, and yeah, get, get that. So what has happened here is that at least we've got the eyes, the nose, and the mouth in. Now we want to start dealing with kind of like, I will call these the forms of his face so that it starts looking a little bit more like him. Like under the eyes, he's got this bag here. There's a kind of like a cheek muscle over here. And there's a, a line to show his age, he's aged a bit. I'm just going to draw a straight line down there. His mouth, it comes out. And underneath, there is a little bit of a, a fold. So all the forms on his face, and when I say forms, it's like those little lines that create a little bit of um, uh, structure to his face, um, gives it life. These are the things I'm honing on now. So just those little bits of structure, um, like that furrow around his eye there. There's another one in the middle. Just, and I'm using the broad stroke technique here, just a broad, just a broad stroke, okay? Now I'm moving across his nose to get just a bit of the effect of his, his nose. And then there's a, like, look at that stroke from his nose. Look at how it comes down, like the whole, uh, people call it number 11, but you know, <laughs> the line. So I'm gonna pull that line now, just pull it really strong. Just go and pull that line, just really pull it down. And then I'm gonna come to where it folds. It actually folds in and then it creates, it creates the chin area. And now all this place is dark. And that makes it easy to handle. So all I'm going to do from this, for, um, this point forward is to just add shadow. It's like the darkest tones. I'm going to put the shadow here because the, the nose casts a shadow. I'm going to put a shadow where the, his nose is over here. That helps. I'm going to put a shadow under his eye. And then all this area is pure shadow. And I'm using the broad stroke technique. Just look at what I'm doing. Look at the marks. So when I hold a pencil like this, I can produce something very close to a brush stroke. And you can practice this. It's all in the book. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going all, all, all on. And this is just me playing with the side of the pencil. So here we go. All this. Just keep it going. Make sure it has a lot of structure in there. Um, sorry, a lot of tone in there. And underneath here, a lovely shadow emanates. For that shadow, look at the line, look at it moves. It just goes across, zoop, and over. So across, zoop, and over. And to make this interesting, all I'm gonna do is to use the side of the pencil with strokes. Just watch. 
See how quickly it's filling in. It kind of, it's almost like using a brush, but it's a lovely technique. And because I've sanded the paper, it feels good. The, the paper is absorbing the, the Sounders Waterford paper, which is brilliant paper. It just absorbs everything. So I'm just going to go quickly because of our time. Make sure that, um, you know, I just really knock all this in. Broad stroke technique, broad stroke. That's all I'm using. It's almost like using the pencil like a brush. And I'm going to change it because sometimes the pencil gets a little bit blunt just, just as change you, that area just as you're doing that Advanjay, just let you know you've got 20 minutes so we're in no rush we're all really enjoying it so carry on doing your thing thank you and then i'm just gonna go really darker now really darker and then the air just gonna darken that one too and yes so now everything almost that i need for the sketch is almost as it were set I'm just going to darken the background a bit so it kind of feels right. Just darken the background. Same broad stroke technique, okay? You know, just broad stroke technique. Just really darken all that. Really darken this area. Just darken, like really darken it, okay? And then he has some um, just this time, I'm just going to go with some organic lines to create kind of like... Um, just his skin, a mid-tone skin. You know, this guy lived in the Mediterranean. He's like a lot of like uh, tan. So I'm just going to create that. That's not where I'm focusing on. So I'm just going to use a mid-tone to create that, okay? Now, all of a sudden, I'm going to make sure that everything starts feeling a little bit more um, detailed. So I'm going to change into a darker colored pencil just to bring it out. At this point, you can see that it's, he's almost there, okay? So now I'm going to work on his eye. So inside the eye, I'm going to use a darker pencil now and just create a lovely kind of a, a dark, so some of the dark lines so inside his eye, like that one. And then in here, just get the eye socket, just to get the eye socket in there and a little one. So I have this whole area, I'm gonna darken this and then really get an intense curve just over the eye, just over. Everything I'm doing here is from pure observation and it's like, you know, practice, practice, practice. So after this, when you get the book, you're gonna have a, you're gonna make sure you get a sketchbook. Go for the most inexpensive ones. Don't get too posh with it. And you're gonna make sure you sketch something from life every day. I actually mentioned that in the book. Now I'm on this side of his face and I'm trying to make sure I get that really definite side over there. And there's a nice bit of dark. Again, I'm using the broad stroke with this one too, the side of the pencil, just carving into his um, um, eye area. And then I'm gonna go in again over here and get that other socket. Make sure I rule a line down and see where it goes. Okay, it goes, yeah, that's correct. I just rule a straight line down to see whether the eyeball, whether it, connected with the nose and it's a little bit out of the nose just there that would do because everything you're trying to do you're making sure that you're following it it's proportional and things like that so I'm ma just making sure everything fits so you can get an intense gaze Picasso's intense gaze he was a very powerful representational artist before he started abstracting. You look at his initial drawings, his early drawings, they are amazing. And so I believe every kind of art starts from you learning these basics that I share in the book and I'm sharing with you now. I'm gonna go to his nose, just darken that too. Everything is the broad stroke. Just notice that I'm using the broad stroke all the way through broad stroke, and I've got to the area where his nose is here, and I'm gonna darken that, just darken that really strong. And underneath, really pull that out and get the bottom of his nose dark too. Here, I'm gonna darken that. Now I'm gonna go to his mouth area. He has a particular little indention over there, and then this, in the middle of his um, uh, mouth, the dark, the, the, 
the line of the lip is quite dark. And then I'm just going to use, again, the, a broad stroke to create the tones for his lip. Then this side of the lip kind of fades. It fades out a bit. It's not as deep. It's not as thick. And then underneath the lip, oh, that is very deep. So I'm going to go deep with the tone there. And then all I need to do is so darken some of those areas. Get that area in. All these are just little strokes I'm putting in now. Um, the side of his face, a little bit of a fold over here, an under little pinna, just something over his chin. Darken that. Really make this area dark um, under the chin because it carries a lot of weight, that, that, that line. And then I'm moving over here to where his um, hair is again, going through hair, you know, He's got this bald head. I'm not going to work too much on that. Come back to this side, and you've got a nice feel of this side of his face. I'm going to actually darken this now because it's a little bit darker than the others. So again, broad stroke, broad stroke. Keep going, broad stroke. Just keep moving it in, all broad, all nice and broad. There's The absence of light in this area makes me just want to fill everything up. So I'm just filling everything up, everything up, just filling it up, filling it up till I get to the edge of the paper. I'm going to darken this side. I hope you can see his face starting to pop out just because I put that little bit of dark in there because that is tone. I talk about tone in the book too. And all these things, they're kind of interrelated. Um, now we've got this lovely shapes here. I'm going slowly, but all this... I'm going to darken this side too, just to make sure it brings out the side of his face. So let's darken this, darken this, all that darken, bring it to the edge, move across. This is broad stroke. Everything happening here is the broad stroke. And I'm going to go a little bit wild now. You're going to see the wild side of me now. Just this is really just to cover this whole area too, to make it look interesting. So here I go, just crazy wild. That's the addictive sketcher in me, all right? That's a bit crazy. Just cover that area, really make sure the whole thing starts feeling, you know, arranged and cool and nice. And then I've got the dark area of the hair there. And then... I can come back to the face. So gradually I go back to my um, other pencil I was using at the beginning. Actually, let's go with the black because the little bit of ball in the eye is black. I'm now going for some details. I'm now going for some details, some nice details that I can see. So I'm, you know, I use three colored pencils. I've used um, the light brown, the light brown. I've used the... Um, the, 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 the normal brown, but this time I'm using the black just to get some, to get some more details, just some, so it's three colored pencils, um, a light brown, a dark brown and black. Yeah, that's what I'm using at the moment. So I'm just gonna, I'm using this to get the inside of the eye, just that inside right there. And I'm using this to plot everything that I'm working on now. So get the side, and then the side of his um, nose there, the line, that strong line that goes across, very strong line um, goes across his mouth. Everything I'm doing is just to bring, but I want you to see how little detail I've needed to use into getting to where I am. So you don't, oh, because a lot of people, they say, oh, it's so much detail. Like, I'm going to have to deal with so much detail. No, if you know the initial principles that I'm talking about here, it will all make sense. And as you go along, there won't be any pressure because like I said, you can let people know all I'm doing is a sketch. It was my easiest cop out whenever I wasn't sure of what I was doing and it took the pressure off. So I'm just going deep into this. I'm gonna shade this with the black again now, just really get that dark and um, work on the side of his head here. I'm just gonna darken this area. To just add a little bit more dark to this area, just, just all that dark, just get the shape in there. And then a little bit of his eye around here, there's a nice feel of, oh, 
his eyes, oh, the strongest bit of his face is his eyes. That's where the character sits. That's where his character just almost resides in his eyes. He had the most piercing eyes, bro. Yeah. So now I'm going, going across, again, working on the side. Um, and I'm gonna put, I'm going back to my brown colored pencil, just work on the mid-tones. So all I'm gonna be working on now are some mid-tones. Mid-tones that he got an indention in the middle of his, um, uh, just the middle of the lip and the, uh, uh, and the nose, the top lip and the nose, just an indention there. And I'm work, so I'm working on all the mid-tones now because I seem to have most of the tones sorted out. It's the mid-tones I'm working on. And then I'm gonna move to this side of it and balance it up. So let's just really get this deep, move it to the side. Each time I'm just checking how I'm doing for time, I think I'm 15 minutes away, which is good because remember, all I want you to remember, this is a sketch. And one thing you're able to grasp here is a process that you can use with some of the techniques I've shared and they are time said They Adi actually work. Adibanji? Yes. Hello, buddy. Just let you know, you've got uh, roughly just under 10 minutes uh, remaining just to give you a little bit of a time check. It's it fun. is incredible yes. what you are doing. Uh, we think yeah. you're, you're an exceptional artist. But one thing we're all noticing is you are making it so accessible because the whole team, we all want to have a go at this. So uh, carry on your demonstration, <laughs> but we are loving it. Thank you. So here we go. So now I'm on, his, I'm on this side of his face and I'm really running this through. And I'm just working on the tones, tones, tones. The thing about a sketch, and I'm, I'm going to say this as a source of encouragement, is you can stop at any time. When I'm on the train and I'm sketching someone, so say I sketch them, and, okay, this is a side view, and they move, I stop. Um, if I saw another person, I'll start again. I never continue when the person is left because it's all about observation. So I want you to know that. So even if I was, even if they said, stop now, Adibanji, you've run out of time. Do you know what my cop out will be? You know it. It's just a sketch. And that's the encouragement there. There is no pressure. Until you get it and until you're comfortable, you can keep riding on. Now I'm just going to work on this side and make sure I bring these tones to be darker. Because you notice this side is darker than his face. So let's go. Just keep going broad stroke. If I don't get the broad stroke, I run it across here until I feel the right broad stroke on my um, on my pencil. Just keep going. Keep going. I'm just going to work that in. Just keep that going. You see me working this whole thing through. And here, I'm gonna work on some of the furrows on his forehead, the lines, and then now I am gonna go into what I call hatching. These are hat hatching, these kind of strokes I'm gonna put into it now. I'm sharpening, you can see that I'm sharpening my um, colored pencil. These strokes I'm gonna put into it now, they are the kind of hatching strokes that will create a little bit more interest. So here I'm gonna go right from here. I'm gonna go round his nose with some lines. You can see these lines I'm putting in. They are to bring out the structure a little bit more. Some of them can be wavy. They're just strokey lines. I'm gonna use a lot of them in his, um, uh, what do I call it? The furrow, his, uh, uh, on top of his eyebrow. You can just see me waving these strokes all you're seeing, and um, let me just do it here, are things like this, are things like that. It's to bring out the form in a little bit more detail. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. And I'm gonna use this to bring out some of the detail, the form, the areas that um, I've done the broad stroke, but this is just to bring it out a little bit more. Um, here I go on this side, watch how I carve it, cause that's the movement it makes. And then I get to this area uh, over here, again, just moving it around. The, his lip, his lower lip, I'm going to run the strokes over. This all gives it some sort of dynamism. I really love hatching. It's my love. I, I, I just love to hatch with the, with, the, with the pen or the pencil. 
it just creates a nice feeling. And I'm going to run the pencil all the way across, just strokes, just a strokes. Um, those of you that know Rembrandt would know what the technique I'm using, how Rembrandt would just use the pen and run it across the face and bring out form. And I'm going to use it on his um, body now. So the shoulder area, just going to run that. And I'm running it according to the movement. Then he's got this um, clavicle, just the collarbone. I'm going to create that movement underneath. And then here, just going to wedge this all over. And then in the middle here, just some lovely strokes that come up again. And then he's got this hairy bits, which I'm just going to knock in here. And I'm just going to make the rest of it side strokes, side strokes. Again, I'm going to go into his eyes with the black now and bring out a little bit more detail in those eyes. Just a little bit more detail in the eyes. Just a little bit more. Really make it read strong. Really make it read strong because he's got the most amazing eyes. This is, this is what I feel the capture of him. Um, lovely bit of uh, just um, st um, structure. Um, all I'm doing now, I think I've got like four minutes to do this. So I'm, I'm kind of like just rounding up on little, I call these the bits I'm doing now, the niggly bits. They, they are, they're dangerous because sometimes you can overdo it and you spoil a good sketch because you still want the sketch to have strength. You want it to have power and a punch. So I have to be careful here. Just uh, make sure I do it. Yep. Banjo, I'm so sorry, buddy, but we are uh, unfortunately beaten by time. Uh, oh, got, that's fine. You've got, like I told the people, you, we you've can got end. two minutes. If you just want to finish off, I know you're showing something important there. Yeah. So if you want to finish that off, we've got two minutes just to give you that two little minutes. warning. Yes. So okay. the last bit I'm just going to put in, side of his face, a little bit of the air, and somewhere around here showing that dark shadow over there. And all I'm going to do now is to sign it. <laughs> that and is... I'm going to put Picasso. Oh. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> you are incredible. Seriously, uh, watching that, we are absolutely in awe. Now, uh, can we just give a shout out to your social media? Because we want all our viewers to be following you. So how can we follow you on social yes. media? So my social media is at Addictive Sketcher. On Instagram, on Facebook, it's Adebanji Alade Artist or Addictive Sketcher. You just put Addictive Sketcher in, I'm going to pop out some way. <laughs> hey, you, my friend, will we get, I'm going to be following you right after this show. Uh, it has been an absolute honor. I really mean that. Look, one day uh, when restrictions do get eased, we would love to have yeah. you in the studio if you're willing yeah, to come down. But that's been absolutely awesome. Very quickly, I know we've got a few more, uh, just a couple of minutes. Uh, just tell us, when, yeah. you, when you discuss value uh, for the audience, yeah. just explain what you mean by that. So when I say value, I mean the lightness or darkness of the area. And mm -hmm. looking at this, this is the darkest value. Yeah. This is a middle tone value, and this is the light value. So yeah. it's just like saying how light or how dark something is. And all of that is explained in the book. You're an absolute gentleman, and thank you so much for taking the time uh, to uh, join us. You welcome thank to the you. Uh, welcome <laughs> to the family, my friend. So we're hoping to have lots more shows with you. You are awesome. The whole team have absolutely loved this hour. So thank you so much. Truly, thank you. Thank you too. Right. Thank you. Everyone. You take care. Cheers, buddy. Keep sketching. Show them. <laughs> And remember the golden rule, it's just a sketch, that's it. Uh, this hour, this hour is the epitome of why Hochandra is such a special place because where else would you find a craft channel that would dedicate a whole hour to just purely expressing the form of sketching, no presenters waffling on, it was all about the sketching with uh, Adabanje and that's what it's all about, Hochanda. We always strive to bring you the demonstrations, whatever kind of crafting you're into. Now obviously we are a shopping town channel, I know sometimes presenters will have to talk and give you updates, but we are passionate 
about showing you the demonstrations and techniques. And this hour has showcased why Hochanda is such a special place. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you have just tuned in and uh, you might have missed this hour, it is, this is one of the hours I would thoroughly suggest. Go onto our website or use the Hochanda app and get, uh, you can watch it or get your friends watching as well after the show. I'm actually going to give my mum a call because she would love this hour and I'm going to tell her to watch on Rewind. Just give you a little update on the book. It was incredibly popular. Uh, the Addictive Sketcher, uh, 434, 135, your item number, 1199. All the principles that you show, uh, you were shown in the demonstration will be expressed. 60% of the stock has gone there, but whoever bought that, guarantee you're going to absolutely love it. Thank you so much uh, for your company and thank you to 